Welcome to Engineering a UAV Drones Farm Week 10. This week we're going into managing a project with volunteers. As we encountered some issues on our current way of working, we will go in depth on the psychology behind volunteering and how this will help us manage a big and complex project like engineering a UAV. By the way, if you can code Discord bots, please keep watching because I need your help. Hey guys, as you might have heard last video, I'm going through a breakup right now. I've been trying to stay tough and keep the project going, but me and Josh noticed something interesting happen in our team. But to understand that, let me just explain our way of working and how we have the project set up right now. So this is kind of how we currently got it set up. So we have a Discord server with about 25 people and in there we have different categories. When you join the server, you have to pick like which category you want to work in. You only see the channels for your team to ensure that nobody can like walk in and take everything and just make it themselves, you know, like a security measure. So there are about five teams, six actually, uh, aerodynamics design, electronics and software, structures and mechanical engineering, propulsion, social and marketing, and project coordination. Most of these have been a bit dead. Every single department has a team leader and a second in command. We did that to make sure that if the team leader is at school, it's a volunteer of course, we still have someone that can back it up. Now, we actually didn't have a team leader for every single department and also not a second in command. And for example, one quite active team leader cluster, he had some like school exams and now the entire Arrow team is not doing anything or like very inactive because there's nobody to replace him. So what do the team leaders and second in command really do? And I wrote it all down and I'm going to show all the team leaders as well because the least thing I can do is be very clear about what is expected of a team leader. The goal was to take away some time for me because I cannot always talk with people and lead everything and especially as the project was growing and uh, I still need to make these videos and I still have some other like projects that I'm working on. If I could just talk with the team leaders and basically get the point across to them, then the team leaders could get the point across to the members of that team and get everything going. So then if I talked with them more intensively, make a plan and talk with members in the team so that they also understand what happens and what needs to be done. With making a plan, I mean like, okay, we have to make a flight controller. So what steps do we need to take? What tangible stuff do we have to do to get there? Because if someone joins or if someone's in the team, then if you don't give them anything to do, then like we're losing out on so much progress. Making a proper plan and having tasks ready is actually not too easy, I feel like. Then when that is all done, um, the team leader could just like resolve some issues if someone's like unhappy, just talk with them, for example, uh, delegate tasks to people who don't have one, keep the team motivated and follow up on inactive members. If there are inactive members for a long time without notice or anything uh, and they're like not replying, then we will like the team leader would have to tell me because then like those people would have to be kicked because uh, it's a security weakness to have people in the server uh, that aren't really doing anything. And then thank the volunteers uh, for their progress and hard work and keep track of what is happening so we don't accidentally do things twice, for example, um, and we just understand what is going on. So I think this is a fairly good system, but there are a few problems that we encountered, not really with this plan, but mostly with getting it going. If I don't have proper team leaders, then anyone can join and they will join in a server in this project and then you join and then there's nothing to do basically. And that means that those people will also just leave right away. So then, or just be inactive from that point on. That's what I really noticed as well. Um, so really from the beginning, it all has to be set up right. We got to have stuff to do. Um, it needs to be all managed properly so we can actually make progress and be proud of ourselves. Um, but that is hard without team leaders um, because the same thing happens to the team leaders. If I don't like properly know what tasks need to be done and because that's pretty hard to do for five uh, departments at once, then you kind of have to issue that the team leader is also in the same state and also becomes inactive or not really motivated. So it's like an endless cycle of tough stuff. Another thing that I noticed with volunteering is people volunteer for a reason, and that is recognition. Now there's an issue. If I give recognition to people, I like doing that. I like telling everyone on YouTube, on these videos, like who's doing a lot and who's doing impressive things. And I will do that. But at the same time, if I want to motivate people that aren't doing anything, then you cannot 
um, like show appreciation for nothing, you know, because then it's not worth anything. Now, there is also another thing that we noticed, and I don't know how to say this respectfully, because I don't know if this is like wrong to say. I'm just trying to be realistic. Let's just say that it's, it shouldn't be wrong. OK, just hear me out. Basically, my point is that you have different type of people. Like, of course, we have like had a lot of applicants and we have noticed a lot of different types of people. But there are certain themes that go on, you know, if you didn't know, YouTube does the same thing. You are watching this video and the other person that is also watching this video right now, he is or she is probably a he because you're probably also a he. He is very similar to you because YouTube makes profiles of people and people tend to be similar. I'm editing and I feel like I didn't do this justice, but social media actually makes groups of people that are similar based on how you act. And that means that they can look at if I, for example, like a TikTok or a short, then they will also show that same TikTok or short to someone that is similar to me. That is why you sometimes also have this quiz, you know, did you like the post? When you fill that in, you're also answering for thousands of other people that are like you because you only get that sometimes and it's not like everyone gets it only one person gets it maybe this is common sense for some people but for other people it's not it's quite interesting to me because this goes further than an algorithm this this is like human nature there's not one thing there's groups and i'm going to quickly make it clear what types of people that we found first type i want to talk about is the type that only talks uh what i mean by that is that they join to contribute and mostly what they do is talk about stuff about ideas about often ambitious things but they don't when it comes to actually working or putting some effort into actually making it work that's not there now this does not mean okay wait i gotta make a difference okay so we got the only talks and we got the only talks but is very smart now this person for example jonathan would be this person he only talks but he but he told us like I don't have time to help out because I also have the my own project, but I am willing to give advice and he is very smart. So that is honestly amazing. Every time I talk with him, I learn so much like I it brings me so much clarity and it's amazing. And then this only talks. I'm not they don't have to necessarily be stupid. They can just be normal people. But compared to the ones that are very smart, then what are they contributing? That's my question, kind of, because we need to get something done. And I noticed that if we keep going off track in talking and that person isn't really contributing to like what they're saying isn't necessarily anything new uh, or anything useful for us to talk about, you know, um, so I noticed that I feel like these people demotivate these people and the people that are going to be here, which are talks and does people, meaning they also talk, but whatever they say, they actually do it. For example, um, with propulsion, for example, a lot of people like the only talks people, for example, they can it's tempting to say with too much confidence that configurations of like where the motor locations are, for example, like a quadcopter setup or a combustion engine. It is easy to say, oh, this is more efficient. This is better. But there are just too many uh, different variables that it wouldn't be the first time that we thought something and it wasn't the case. But then you also have people that talk and do. So they, for example, Nicholas Barrick, he made that uh, entire um, summary like he actually looked up what motor configurations uh what batteries the cost of it all the weight of it all an actual test plane on all different configurations figuring the price out figuring everything out and based on that we have a way clearer and way more useful idea of what we have to do with only talks you only get to the stage of not really knowing what to do and then we have another type though just does these people they don't necessarily talk Maybe sometimes not enough, like, because, okay, these people are amazing because they have been doing the most work ever. For example, Xenos or Joshua, they are like Joshua is working on the offline navigation software uh, to simulate if that would work or not. And Xenos is building the PCB, the design of it. Now, these people, I talked to them a few times and they know what 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 to do and what we're doing. And they tell me what they have been doing and they just do it and don't really say much in the server, don't really 
talk too much with people, but they get stuff done and they get a lot of stuff done. They do research. They're really, really determined. We do sometimes have the issue that people don't talk enough, but still do. For example, in the electronics and software development team, uh, communication wasn't always the best. And that's why I really want to make a better system for managing all this because I cannot blame anyone for not communicating because like nobody knows what is expected. Basically, what I mean is these people are very amazing. These people, I'm going to be honest, are not necessarily useful because they might actually be more of a liability. And I do really appreciate these people, but I feel like, and, and I like talking as well, but I feel like they should be in a different Discord server. And uh, also for the fans, they also wanted a Discord server. And I think that's a good idea. So I kind of want to make a new Discord server with a specific fan section. Let me just show you, okay? So this is kind of like a prototype, I guess, of the Discord server that I was thinking about. First of all, you have the Navius, well, first you have information. So if you're a fan, um, you can see these channels as well. So you have Wall of Fame and there I can like appreciate, like show appreciation for contributors and people that did impressive things. So the whole server can see. In announcements are just for like regular announcements. And then for join the team, I can like give instructions and information on contributing as well. So you can also join the, uh, the actual contribution contributing team thing and then here an introduction which is just an introduction to the fan side of the server and then here you have the um, navius fan so you just have generals general discussion suggestions and a voice chat and then when you join the team in this channel you will get access to these two channels um and this is a little bit of like a test like a uh, unfinished description okay so but this will help you understand my idea two levels of contribution we decided to distinguish the contributions into two levels this means that in level one there are different tasks available and there you can prove yourself in terms of your work ethic and smarts when we're happy with your work you'll be promoted to a level two contributor this allows you to join the real smart people and work on the real cool stuff but why two levels well of course what i just showed you as well but also because this is done to ensure we can make ordered progress and keep our progress safe when there's a limited amount of people in the level two stage there are less security weaknesses ensuring that your contributions are used for what you intended having a smaller community for more complex developments also helps with communication we have noticed previously that a lot of people come and go that made it hard to understand what we can expect from people and how someone else can continue where they left off without confusion if someone joins in for a week does something important and then the next person does not know how to continue working on that then we kind of lost all of that so how i'm imagining this is something like this so this is a demo department like i can ask add a task like this um, with a command and then just don't worry about all the spamming i go to this bot with chat gpt and it makes like a task like this so it's like the title and what needs to be done for the task so this is inside the level one contribution by the way um how many people are needed the deadline which would probably also be always like a week and a reward because i was thinking maybe we can add like an in-game in-game well like a currency, like a virtual currency. So these kinds of tasks will be a bit less complex and less hard. But there are things that still need to be done. It's actual things that we actually need done. Um, when you click on join, you would be put in a new channel where you can talk with the other people that also joined and you can work together to get this done. Now, these tasks will not be huge. We're not expecting. But whenever a team like this finished the task and co completed it properly, they get 10 coins. With those coins, we can go to the contributor store where contributors can spend their coins on things like shoutouts in the video, joining the high level team, plugging their social media and other things in a video and getting access to sneak, sneak peek channels similar to the thing Patreons get to see. Now joining the high level team could also be like 50 coins. I would say if each task is 10 coins, then you would have to do five of these tasks. And if you're still there at that point, then I think I have trust that you are determined, like actually want to do this stuff. You enjoy doing this stuff and you enjoy doing it for a long time. So then you really know that you're only left with all of these people. Oh, wait, that's not what I meant with all of these people and not these people, because these people wouldn't even do those tasks. 
Although these people will still be able to be in the Discord and can give suggestions, discussions, and just talk with other like-minded people. So they can still do what they enjoy and it's still going to be useful because we can see some suggestions here and yeah. So then the level two contributions would be in the main server that we already had. And in there will just be an exclusive server with the most determined people based on this system. And then those people can make super good progress without things being in the way, etc. It will be a smaller team as well. Uh, apparently Facebook, they only have a development team of 25 people. I heard that somewhere. I didn't fact check it though. But smaller teams with determined people are worth more than bigger teams without determined people. You know what to expect. Like when Josh is busy for a week, I still know that he will probably come back because he always comes back and does something again. Like you can depend on those people way better um, because that is the biggest issue kind of with volunteering um, and managing a voluntary group that does something so complex like this that you don't always know what to expect. Now, what I'm scared about with this um, idea is that it takes away a human aspect of this. So I think we need to just test it or if someone else has a different idea for this, then please let me know because like, I don't know if this is just too much robot -y, you know what I mean? Um, but of course this would not be it this is just like the task and then you still talk with all the people in there you would still have team leaders here you would still have fans and you would still be like having a cool role and like people know ooh, like you will definitely still feel appreciation to what you're doing and i will still be showing and i will definitely if someone joins the next level like level two they will definitely always get a shout out and just in the wall of fame, I can like say like these people are, are doing so well, uh, stuff like that. So I think it is still possible like this right now. It seems a bit inhumane, but I think it will be a lot better in the end, unless someone in the comments of this video has a better idea. If you do have a better idea, or if you think this is stupid, or if you think you can do it better, this is not meant passive aggressive, but genuinely I'm looking for management people. And I don't care if you tell me I'm being stupid because who am I? I'm 19. I, I think I forgot to mention that I never did any of this. So that is why I'm probably struggling a bit. Um, but I asked a lot of advice from people that uh, are also managing uh, volunteer teams and stuff like that. So I did get some advice and I think at some point we'll be able to get there. And if we do, then that's already a huge, huge achievement. A hiccup like this in a project like this, it seems pessimistic but it's not it's uh something that needs to be done we need to solve this uh, otherwise there will not be a drone you know so this is also important and having issues means that there, it's finally time to solve it for good you know so once again i'm really looking for management people people that can be team leaders people that can help me set things up uh that's why i dedicated this entire week's video to showing you what's going on with this because I did make some other progress, but I will show you that next video because otherwise we're kind of going over two topics, but I'm kind of hoping that this video will reach people that do management and enjoy it. If you do, please um, email me or um, fill in the form in the description to apply and we will try to get back to you as soon as possible. And I'm so glad with that. Now, also, that is why I need a Discord bot coder because I'm trying to make a bot, but ChatGPT is still pissing me off a lot. So if someone can just do it for me, then that would be amazing because this is not it. I have so much more plans for the bot. Anyways, thank you guys for watching. Uh, next video will be a lot more optimistic. I know that. All right. See you guys.